Welcome everyone who is on. Um, just so that everyone is aware, um, uh, this is um, a uh, streamed live broadcast and we will be having opportunities for questions even though um, it is streamed on YouTube. Uh, my name is Christine Orr, Superintendent of the South Glens Falls School District. And uh, we have several people that will be helping us this evening um, with the conversation um, that is um, about the South Glens Falls for Edward merger, merger study and next steps. Uh, I will be sh I will be recording this meeting and we will be putting the recording on our shared website, the Fort Edward Southlands Falls merger website, which is linked to both uh, uh, of our web pages. Wait for it. Okay, so with that, uh, Mark, uh, do you want to introduce yourself and who's with you this evening? Hi, I'm Mark Besson, the interim, interim superintendent at the uh, Fort Edward School District. And with me is uh, Tom Roach, our board president. Great. Also on the screen this evening um, is Tim Dawkins, a su assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction of the South Glens Falls School District. Uh, Flora Covey, uh, director of personnel development. Um, and Mr. Bill Elder, who is the South Glens Falls uh, board president. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the right people for the right questions um, to anything that comes our way uh, for this. Sharing my screen. Thumbs up, Mr. Dawkins. Thank you. So uh, we asked uh, recently uh, to our community members uh, what does the community want to know about the possibility of a merger? Um, and we've heard this in several different ways. I know since uh, Mark joined uh, for Edward um, this summer, um, he's heard uh, from the community in several, several different ways, and I continue to get questions along the way. And so what we're hoping to have is dialogue this evening, uh, so that way we can give you the recommendations that were made by the study and the findings of that study. Um, if there are other questions that come up after this, uh, we can always leave that link open and put an FAQ out on our shared site uh, for this. Um, I think one thing that's important is uh, we did the study uh, so that way we could find out what exactly uh, is going to happen uh, for both communities. And really the communities are made up of four towns. Uh, the town of Moreau, the town of Wilton, the town of Northumberland, and the town of Fort Edward. Um, and so it was really about having conversations about all of those towns and what a merger would do to merge those four areas into one school. I'm going to pause on this slide. Um, if you haven't gone to our website and you are watching online, um, at, if you put your phone up to this code and you uh, open your camera, you will be able to go to a Google form, uh, which will uh, bring you to questions that you can do. You do need to put, submit your email address just so that way if we don't get to your question and we need to respond to you at a later time, uh, we can do that. Uh, but we will try to get to as many questions tonight as possible. So that way uh, everyone is informed on what the fact finding was of the merger study. Uh, Mr. Dawkins and Mrs. Covey on the back end will be ma uh, managing those questions. Um, if they feel that those questions are um, important at that moment in time, they may interrupt us uh, to make sure that we stay on topic um, or we'll be waiting until the end. And then Mr. Besson and I will answer the questions um, that we can uh, based on the information that was given this evening. So Mark, I'll turn it over to you to talk about, you know, what we're really looking at this evening um, in this presentation. So we're looking at the 13 recommendations made by the consultant concerning the report for the two school districts. We're going to look at the potential support and the tax relief that will benefit the taxpayers of both communities. We're going to talk about how the enhanced programs and especially how reserve funds will help our, all of our students in the future. Each board is going to agree to assurances that was done during the process. And while they're not legally binding, the Board of Education has realized that that is a correct way to go forward for the, for the state, for both communities to become one. 
So first, we'd like to talk about the statement of insurances. And um, I took these uh, because I um, was part of the process in the beginning of the merger. And so when we were interviewing uh, consultant firms for this, uh, one of the recommendations they had for us even before choosing them was to talk about what are some things that you want to drive the study? What are some things that the Board of Education truly believes would benefit their own community and the other community? And they wanted to make sure that those were there. So uh, they were almost like um, you couldn't change those. You wanted to make sure that they were there. Um, I know throughout the committee, there were many questions on what the word assurance means. Um, it is not legally binding in insurance. Um, it is something that boards agree to um, in that uh, uh, in a friendly manner, but in the same sense as elected officials, um, if we say that we are going to do these things and then we don't do them, uh, it would not uh, bode itself well um, in that world as um, elected officials uh, for that. And so these are the four that the two boards um, at that moment in time who was on the boards had agreed to. Um, and the first one is, as we value 21st century education for our students, a successful merger vote will provide resources to enhance student learning opportunities. Um, many questions on the thought exchange, many questions to us is about the students and the opportunities and what that serves. Um, so we also, while we're looking at efficiencies and why obviously the merger studies does come with a cost savings. And so financially we do discuss this. Uh, really, it's also about looking at program what is working in both districts right now? What is not working? What do we wish we had? So that way, if we were to become one district and one group of people, what could we put in for all of our students to benefit them in each area? Um, it also talks about um, an effort to, do, to accomplish this. The Board of Education will discuss and determine the most appropriate way to maximize the merger aid, to assess the means to aid taxpayers. So not only talking about curriculum enhancement, but tax reduction in all of the towns, expand and enhance the academic program, and then provide for the future. Um, again, it cannot be on day 20 or year five that we start thinking about the future. It has to be right now in the conversation on what we do with the funds. So all three of these areas are looked at. Uh, statement two, um, again, it's an insurance, assurance, um, but uh, this talks about the building of Fort Edward and it talks about the elementary school. Uh, one of the things that um, I know most of the people um, in South Glens Falls um, really enjoy so much is that each one of our elementary schools is its own community. We have neighborhood schools, the students around those neighborhood schools are part of that. And while we have the same curriculum and we try to do the what the same, the how that we go about it is very different and it takes a feel on of its own. Um, I know that at first when our board talked with the Fort Edward goal board, it was very important to the Fort Edward board to have that same neighborhood school feel um, in the conversation. And so this assurance was brought in to ensure that the, the district of South Glens Falls, if it were to merge with Fort Edward, would then have five elementary schools because the neighborhood feel of all the elementary schools is so important. Uh, in South Glens Falls, we have what's called attendance maintenance zones. It's very normal to have that. So as part of the insurance, we just wanted to make sure that as we build our policy as one district, that we would talk about ma attendance maintenance zones in that. Um, and it does talk about that students K-5 may be transferred to a different elementary building, but only if the enrollment is too low. Um, I can tell you in South Glens Falls, we have elementary schools that have two classes a building. We sometimes have in other elementary schools, three classes a building, or at most four classes, not in a building, I'm sorry, in a grade level. So we have two, three, or four in a grade level. We never wanna to go to five in one building. We always wanna to try to even those numbers out. I can also tell you that when we had low enrollment in our smallest elementary school, we tried to use our tenants mate in the zone to always have two elementary classrooms at every grade level. Um, if you are somebody that's watching and you saw the report on from the from the full report uh, from the consultants, they talked a lot about elementary and what that would look and feel like. Um, elementary neighborhood schools are really raised um, all over New York on having two grade levels at every or two uh, classrooms at every grade level, um, and that would be a goal of this as we build what elementary schools look like uh, for the merge district. 
a lot of words on this page, um, a lot of words. Um, uh, but um, to sum it up, um, we really, in the beginning, um, the idea was to make sure that we put out there to, to let everyone know that every employee is valued. And we wanted to say this because in the merger study, the rules of the merger do not really talk about every uh, bargaining unit throughout the process. And we knew that. So we wanted to make sure we put in the assurances that there was a value to every employee. Um, and we wanted to make sure that things were there while there's no guarantees to all of this, that we really would do the best we could uh, in this process to make sure that we kept as many, if not all of the Fort Edward employees um, on board and to look for cost savings and other ways for that, um, but also to do it in a way where everyone was crystal clear in the process. Um, South Glens Falls just added the Director of Personnel Development this year, um, and it definitely comes at a good time uh, for this conversation. And, and you'll hear more about this, but it's really so that way uh, to say, to talk about this is really one staff member at a time, one person at a time, one situation at a time. And so this assurance was really to say, uh, because both districts value their employees, we wanted to give each employee its due diligence along the way in the process to really look at where they are and what would happen um, if the merger were to be voted on for in both communities. Uh, the fourth one is board membership. Um, and this one was really uh, driven by the conversation that uh, the Fort Edward board felt strongly that um, even though we would be one school and we would all be in one unit if the merger were to be there, uh, they wanted to make sure that the town of Fort Edward had a voice, um, especially in the beginning of the merger. Uh, so that way their students, um, their student conversations, their students needs uh, could be heard in that. And so uh, this assurance is there um, every year in Southlands Falls, we have three board seats that are open and any, uh, if this merger were to go through and we had one full uh, school, anyone could uh, join and uh, try to run for the Board of Education from any of the four towns of residents of the Southlands Falls School District. And then if in that, in that place, if somebody from the town of Fort Edward did not get voted in they would be able to participate as a non-voting member so that voice was still there. Um, so again, um, this merger every year, there are three open seats, nine board, or you can only have a total of nine at the maximum. Both Fort Edward and Southlands Falls have that right now. And so this assurance was there so that way the voice of the Fort Edward board or the, Fort Ed the town was a part of the process early on and, and to also make sure that that conversation uh, stuck from that. So those were the statement of assurances. Um, they were there. They drove. They were the very first things that took place. They were not part of the study itself. They were part of the conversations of if we're going to do this, we want to make sure that we have certain things there. These are now the 13 recommendations that were given to us uh, by the consultants um, if we were to have a successful merger vote. These were some things that they wanted us to look at. So Mark, I'll turn it over to you for the first slide. So Emerge Fort Edward South Plains Falls School District would annually update its enrollment projections. And this is commonly done in every school district in the state of New York. You, you use those predictions for future planning, strategic planning, and looking at where you need to do certain things to improve your school. If the Fort Edward is annexed, the Committee of Elementary Teachers and Administrator will be convened as soon as possible for the existing curriculum. We, you know, we implemented a new reading curriculum this year. You know, it, it's very exciting and we want to share that with anyone, regardless of a merger, about the exciting things that we're doing here. And that's also a common practice, as you can see, done in both districts. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm going to turn over the next uh, three recommendations because it had to do with the, uh, the curricular side of the house, the academic side of the house. So, uh, Tim, uh, do you want to uh, talk about these three recommendations? Uh, you did sit in on um, all of the uh, committee meetings um, to listen to uh, the, st the study. Right. So um, all of these, all three of these recommendations have to do with the development of courses uh, in 
emerged school district um, and that recommendation C in emerged district, the Board of Education and Administration should attempt to provide all of the middle high school courses now being offered in both districts, assuming sufficient enrollment. So our, our process for establishing uh, courses each year, including any new courses is on an October, January, February rotation. So uh, any new courses uh, within the Southlands Falls Central School District right now have to be proposed by the middle of October. Um, teachers meet with the building principal, who in turn um, meets with me. We finalize that. Course guides are sent to the printer and ready and published by January for our school counselors to uh, present to the students in classes. And uh, they begin inputting those uh, class choices in February throughout the late winter and early spring. Um, so our, our goal, if a merger was to happen, would obviously be to um, ensure that all uh, students from all four towns have like course material. And so um, we would be working to um, bring in um, current classes that uh, already are at Fort Edward. The recommendation D and E, where we develop more elective courses uh, and develop more extracurricular opportunities for students at the secondary level, that would be a 23-24 school year goal. So we would really have one full year under our belts with students from all four of the towns so that we could engage student voice for all of our students. Uh, that's not something that we would wanna dive right into and make decisions without giving them the opportunity to uh, participate in that. Thanks, Mr. Dawkins. Love letter F and letter G. Uh, letter F has to do with uh, the Committee of Special Education and the Committee on Preschool Special Education. Uh, if merged, a new committee uh, should be appointed with representation from each of the previous district's committees. A district philosophy and priorities for special education instruction should be identified by this committee. Um, this would be one of the first priorities if the merger were to happen and we would know about that um, in the winter time uh, to get this up and running. Um, uh, Jessica Spellberg is our director of special education. We also have an assistant director of special education. Um, I know that there are CSE chairs in both districts um, and all those people would get together to form that new committee and to review IEPs of all of the students um, in, uh, in the district because uh, again, it would be one district um, if the merger were to go through. Um, if a merger occurs, the current Fort Edwards school building as well as the four current South Glens Falls should remain open and house the pre-K through fifth grade program. And then the middle school would go sixth through 12th grade. Uh, that was talked about in the assurances. It's part of the plan. Um, I can tell you no matter which way I run the numbers, uh, there is not a possibility that the uh, Fort Edwards school would be closed completely for kindergarten through fifth grade. The numbers do not support us being able to bring everyone over and closing the building. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about, yeah, but the assurances are only for five years. Uh, what do you expect to do then? Uh, a recommendation A talks about enrollment and looking at those enrollment trends. Uh, in this area, we have been luckier than in other areas because we continue to see either a small growth or a small decline every year um, in enrollment um, amongst the area. And so uh, our long range planning does not include uh, drastic decreases. Uh, therefore, without decreases, um, our kindergarten through fifth grade uh, grade levels would have the same number of students, which means we'd need the same number of sections, which means we would need the same number of buildings open. Um, so, you know, that continues to be part of the long range plan. Uh, but again, the assurances were there. Uh, a lot of work has been done on the Fort Edward uh, building. Um, so it, it is in uh, good condition. Um, and therefore, uh, we would want to maintain that uh, for the students that are in that neighborhood. I know transportation has been a conversation, so Mark, I'll turn this over to you. Yep, transportation comes up often. Um, unfortunately, here right now, we don't have transportation. We are working on it for next year. But in the meantime, the same thing, Under, should there be a merger vote that moves things forward, we are going to get more information out so people understand what the runs are. I know there's a lot of rumors about length of time and everything else, but we're going to before the final vote, we would want to paint a clearer picture for all of the residents in both towns so they could see what the new transportation will look like. 
Um, there'll be finalized runs by 8-1, which is not unusual because guess what? Even if we weren't merging, that's when you start finalizing your runs on 8-run. But we will be having these meetings in Fort Edward with our people to, re to review the runs. In addition, bus maintenance would be done by a school consolidated garage, not out in the public as we're doing right now in this district. But that, that creates savings and also drives a little bit of aid. So, so um, we do have one question right now uh, on the document that uh, has to do with busing. So Mark, I, I wanted to turn that to you because you did help to clarify this one um, previously. Uh, the question is, are we covering busing to South Glens Falls or are they picking up here? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn that to you. The bus, the bus departments will be consolidated. There'll be right. one consolidation. And once they're consolidated, our buses, their buses, our drivers, their drivers will be doing everything together. Our transportation supervisors will be working together to make sure that the runs are done for the new district. But we're going to be focusing a lot after the first, you know, the straw poll to make sure that we're giving people good answers about the transportation in Fort Edward specifically because that is a major question here as, as there is a major need. I would like to point out that uh, one of our policies by our Board of Education is uh, slightly different than the forever policy right now. Uh, currently um, in South Glens Falls, uh, we transport our kindergarten through fifth grade students who uh, live further than a half a mile um, to the school building. And then we, tra we transport our sixth through 12th grade students that live further than a mile. Uh, to a school and, building. And so I believe in where I would mark right now, there's no busing for K kindergarten through certain grade students, correct? No, no, we, we, we'll, you know, if we're a vote district again next year, we'll be putting it to a vote. But right now, unfortunately, we do not have that transportation. So now um, uh, our next two recommendations um, have to do with staffing and has to do with the structure and the collective bargaining agreements. And as I said, we uh, recently hired our director of personnel development. Uh, she full well knew uh, that this uh, merger study was taking place, um, that and if the uh, merger were to go through, there would be significant conversations that would need to take place even prior to the fifth and sixth vote um, you know, for that. So Flora, do you wanna uh, please talk about J and K? Sure. Um so as Christine had you know, talked about earlier, um, all of our employees are valued. And so the Fort Edward salaries will be leveled up to meet up with the um, South Glen Falls salaries with each, within each of the uh, bargaining units. Um, and then my, I myself would be meeting with each staff member um, in Fort Edward to review the changes, because as we know that you know, they will be very individual, there'll be a lot of questions. Um, and so I wanna make sure that everyone understands all the ch uh, changes as we move forward. Um, the next part is about staffing structure um, and then having that to our employees at the earliest possible date. And this again is a priority for us because right now um, our staff receives their tentative assignments on June 10th. So that is um, still the goal that we'd be aiming for so that everyone um, knows what the plan would be moving forward to the following school year. Thanks, Laura. Uh, finally, letters L and M. Um, have to do with finances. Um, it has to do with that fiscal responsibility and the fiscal stability of any school district in New York. Um, this is obviously something that was talked about uh, regularly um, in the committee. Um, it was a conversation that was had. Um, it was something that people asked me about often, um, and that's why I've chosen uh, to talk about this slide. Um, when we talk about this, um, if merged, the Board of Education should closely scrutinize its first budget to ensure that the projected efficiencies are actually achieved following the merger, thus ensuring the local tax relief described in this report. Uh, it does us no good to have these conversations today and then in May pass a, a vote, a pass a budget that did not meet what we stated. Um, again, May's vote, if we were to become one school district, would be voted on by every taxpayer in the four towns. And so it would do us no good to change those rules at all in that. 
uh, because the taxpayers of all four towns will be voting on that. Uh, the other piece is, um, it is a requirement during the budget process uh, to always report to the Board of Education long-term planning. Uh, there's several ways that we do that uh, throughout, and I know each district does it slightly different, uh, but that long range piece is important in there, and it really sets the groundwork, not only for the years that we receive aid uh, from the state, but also about the years after we receive that aid for that. If merged, the Board of Education should develop a financial a plan to ensure long-term fiscal stability. This plan should be given thoughtful consideration the plan should also ensure long-term fiscal stability. And as I said, that's really part of our process. Um, I wanna summarize underneath here uh, what the report did show um, in this. Um, there the district would receive $49 million in incentive <laughs> operating aid over a 14 year period. Uh, that is guaranteed. It is based on 2006, 2007 numbers. Um, it is not um, Southlands Falls receiving this. It is the district of Southlands Falls, which would have all four towns in it. And that money would be used for all the students of all four towns. Uh, f f a little over $5 million would happen in the first five years of the merger. Right? And they do that purposefully uh, because they know in a merger uh, on the front end uh, to keep staff hired, to make sure that we do the leveling up, to make sure we look at each contract all of those pieces are there. So the state sets this up intentionally to front end those years. Um, so we have the fiscal piece of that. There are some other pieces that are fiscal for this. Uh, capital construction. Uh, right now, we are at 79.5% aidable in Southlands Falls and Fort Edward is 90.8%. Uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, Southlands Falls has been working on the next construction project and we had plans to put it up for a vote um, and we are going to be doing that regardless of the merger um, or not. Uh, but our aid on that as of right now is 79.5%. As a district of one, if we were to merge, once that merger takes place, our new district would have a 98% ratio on that for the first 14 years because of the, the idea that we would now be a high need district uh, between the four towns on that. Um, so, you know, on every million dollars, um, when you think about that, we would now be responsible for 2% of that um, as opposed to 98.8 .8 or as opposed to about 11 or 20 right now. Uh, so yeah. can, I, can I interrupt you with a question, Ms. Orr? Sure. Okay. So, um, we have a couple of questions that have to do with the state aid and, and also any debt that's coming uh, over, so I didn't know if you wanted me to ask those now. The first one was, how long does the state, the added state aid last, which was answered 14 years with the amount uh, every year. Um, the next question though was, does Fort Edward have any capital debt that uh, South Glens Falls will be responsible for? And are there legacy costs from Fort Edward that South Glens Falls will be responsible to, to continue, for example, retired staff health, health care costs, et cetera? So I will get to what the each year looks like as far as the state aid in my next slide. So hold tight for anyone that asked that. Uh, we do incur all debt of both districts in the new district. Um, however, if you look at my last bullet on this piece, existing capital debt is aided at the higher of the two districts building age ratios right now. Um, so the Fort Edward building aid ratio is 0.113 higher than the Southlands Falls. So all of our debt would be incurred at that. So our new debt would see a $6.1 million additional savings because we would not be incurring that on our past debt. Um, so it's a little hard to understand, but I know that a lot of people would say like, why would South Lens Falls wanna take on another person's debt? Well, again, once we become one district, it's our entire debt, but there's a cost savings to that entire debt which would save us $6.1 million. Um, I do know, Mr. Dawkins, you also talked about um, retirement costs. I am gonna talk about that in a little bit, uh, but those costs and all of that for retirees is part of the uh, pieces that we incur. And so retirees, uh, they still are retired. They still are retired under their current contract. They still receive the same benefits in the merge district as they do right now in the Fort Edward district. Uh, nothing changes there, and I'll spell it out even a little bit more in another slide coming up. Here is the breakdown from 22-23 uh, to 35-36. 
And then I included 36 through 37 so you could see that. And this first column, I don't know if you can see my uh, pointer or not, uh, but this first column is what the total is that's received each year. So when we talk about that long range plan, uh, why this will ebb and flow a little bit, the idea is to always think about three things equal, academic enhancement, what we're giving to our students, the there and the then, how do we make sure we're adding program, making sure they have everything they need, boots on the ground, ready to go with all of our materials. Reserves, how do we plan for the future? What will that look like? And then obviously uh, for our taxpayers, tax reduction. Um, yes, this is a money conversation. Uh, yes, as superintendent, one of the reasons why we get hired by a board of education is to be fiscally responsible. The only reason why we're fiscally responsible is so that way we have money into the future to continue all of our programs for our students. It really is always about the students, but we need those costs to be done throughout time. And that's why this long range plan of a third, a third and a third continues to benefit the students along the way. Um, not only for the first 15 years, but if we were to stick to the reserves, which we're making that commitment to do, uh, then therefore that would be there for the past, for 15 years after that. So just looking at the um, tax ratio, um, again, uh, this is true value. Um, the town of Moreau, a town I just lived in, just went through a reassessment. Uh, we've, from as long as I've lived here, my assessed value has always been at 100%. I have currently three towns in the, ta in the, in the school district, town of North Auburn, Berlin, town of Wilton, town of Moreau. Each one of those towns is not assessed at 100%. So we always have to use the true value. And we talk about that often in South Glens Falls because the assessed value versus the true value are very different. The true value is what is alike and the state sets that, so that way we know that. Um, and so living in the town of Moreau, that really is that true value of what we have. Um, in the town of Fort Edward, uh, yes, it's in a different county, but the state sets all of the assessed values regardless of the county. Many school districts cross over counties, many school districts cross over several counties. Uh, that is not um, a deterrent of anything. It's just, you know, it's actually different services that could be added to it as opposed to uh, hurt by it. Um, right now, our true value is $15.04 in South Lens Falls and for Edward, it's $21.36. That doesn't mean that's what you pay um, when you got your tax bill uh, per thousand. Uh, because right now the assessed value is not at 100% in three out of the four towns that we're talking about this evening. Uh, so in, in, in currently in the Southland Falls School District, this is the number, it's actually 15.042 as part of the assessment for anyone that received a tax bill from the town of Moreau. If you're in the town of Wilton or the town of Northumberland, you have a different one. Uh, this is something we do all of the time and we share. Uh, we actually, in past pieces to the com committee, we shared a true value, and then we also shared the value based on what the current assessment is. One of the conversations that came up during the committees, what I know has come up since then, is that every, every town in Washington County has made um, an agreement that they're going to be reassessed soon, and what would this look like, and how would that change things? Uh, in, the, in the school districts, um, it really means they're very little. Uh, because we're already taxing on the true value right now. Um, so once things get reassessed and some houses go up or some houses go down, just like what happened in the town of Moreau, um, the number changes. So if you looked at our um, rate last year for the town of Moreau, it was actually about 1580 uh, per thousand, and now it's 1504. Um, so it goes down because the pot gets larger based on the assessment values, and it's like each has like a cut of the pie. Um, and so all of those things still happen and those assessments are done uh, for that. And so this is an approximation using the cost savings. Uh, we approximated about a 2% increase in our aid by the state. We also assumed a 2% increase on what we'd be asking for in our levy um, each year. And then you would see what the true value is on everything. If Washington County reassesses and everyone winds up at 100%, uh, then the true value would also be the cost per thousand for those homes. Um, if it does not or it delays their plan or anything like that, 
the true value then gets converted to what your house is actually worth or valued at right now. But the bottom line is the per thousand stays the same um, in the true value for all four towns on that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure um, you can tell that I've talked a lot about this in um, this because we deal with three towns every year um, and the questions continually come up on this because it's a very hard thing to think about. Um, I guess I like, I like this slide because I get to use the math brain in me every once in a while. Uh, the next piece is the reserves. Um, we definitely got questions along the way on the thought exchange, which I'll share, but I'm sure if I looked at this, um, this topic about how can we ensure that we're not using all of the funds right now. Um, this happens uh, through lots of things. If you've heard of any pilot programs, uh, you're trying to save money for that. Um, you know, down in Malta, when all those things came in and there was a cost savings, you know that that also ends at times. So you're trying to figure out when you're getting benefit of money, what to do with that in the long range plan. Uh, fiscally responsible boards of education ask this question every year uh, to ensure that the people that are paying attention to the reserves um, are there. Uh, South Glens Falls um, has a decent amount of money right now in our reserves in the rainy day fund. Uh, we do that intentionally. Uh, currently we have about $10 million in our capital reserve. Uh, we do that so that way any projects that come up are not at the cost of the taxpayers uh, because we're able to use that money and the $10 million goes to that 79.5% uh, for that. Uh, but building up your reserves is always important uh, because of the changes along the way, whether it's TRS or ERS systems or anything like that, um, whether it's emergency funds. Right now, we don't have um, an emergency fund for uh, repairs. Um, that's something that we're looking at right now even uh, to change over to. But those are things that you do so that way you try to keep things as flat as possible. So you're not dipping into the academic side or a tax cost side, you're using reserves to keep those things um, in the future there. If we follow this plan, we would incur as one district $16 million in what that is, um, whether it's TRS, ERS, whether it's ensuring that we're paying off our debt. Uh, we have an insurance fund, we have a tax tertiary fund uh, for any taxes that there. And then obviously I just talked about the capital fund. So the decision of the funds takes place by the Board of Education Recommendations are made by the assistant superintendent for business and the superintendent, but in the end, there, is, there needs to be the assurance that we will be putting money away every year, so that way the long-range plan stays uh, very comfortable for all the taxpayers. Um, last but not least, um, really first, that's why it's first on, on the form, is our academic enhancements. Um, and again, you'll see that um, you know, the goal is to use at least $16 million for this part as well. Um, and, you know, what does this look and feel like? Um, what does it look and feel like is, is kind of out there. Um, when we talk, uh, I know that um, on some of the thought exchanges, people said, have you talked to the students? Uh, this is really a big part of when we would talk to the students. What do you want? What do you wish you had? What do you think we need? Uh, and it would be of all of the students, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. Uh, what, what things will be there? What program should we be adding? Is it computer science? Um, we, are, we are just starting to toy with eSports. Should eSports be kindergarten through 12th grade and not just ninth through 12th grade? Really, the thoughts of this are endless. Um, and it's really to get all students the opportunities to be able to move students forward in whatever field they want to do. Um, there is a question later on um, about graduation rate, but um, I can tell you one of the conversations uh, that in general in the area all school superintendents have in regard to program enhancements is to really take a look at how your students are graduating, where they want to go post-graduation and apply funds to assist that. Uh, currently about one third of students um, in our area uh, go into four-year college, one third go into two-year colleges, um, and then one third go into the workforce. And so when we talk about program enhancements, um, everyone jumps to having conversations about whether it's AP and honors or IB, uh, but it's really about program enhancements of how many students do we wanna put in CTE classes? Are we putting enough right now? Should we be putting extra money into that? Do we have the right CTE classes? Should we be moving those things? So I could go on and on about this, uh, but this is really where uh, Mr. Dawkins talked about that long range future plan of getting as many stakeholders involved to really plan this out.
they left us at the end um, of this with kind of this final quote. Um, if you read the full page of this, um, the, really the idea is we want to provide tax relief to our residents, and enhance academic programs, and make sure the reserve funds are there uh, for that. From that, um, and from the flyer and from the conversations that I know each district has been having, uh, whether it's in large scale or small scale, we put out the thought exchange and uh, not a lot of people have joined the thought exchange yet. Uh, the thought exchange is still open. So you will not see any reports on our shared site of that uh, yet uh, because we are leaving it for the opportunity of anyone who joined us this evening uh, to do things. And also for people who are just getting the flyers um, to take part in the conversation. Uh, the CAP region BOCES people um, are the ones that help us uh, theme this. They're also the ones that help us do the reports on this. Um, and then they'll be helping us put it on the shared site for that. And it was very simple. The question was, what information do you need from us? Who is the us? Uh, both superintendents, both board of educations, anyone else uh, that can help with these decisions. To, to help you make an informed decision of the possible merger. Um, and I really think that this conversation helped our Board of Education. Um, and we'll be sharing these with both Boards of Education. So that way all they have all the same information of what's out there, you know, what is the driving force of all constituents, uh, not just the ones that we may have heard from already. As of four o'clock today, we had 137 participants. 125 thoughts and 2,880 ratings. And this is really the best part for me in using this tool because it's really not about just one in particular thought and then rating it a one through five. It's really about people's individual thoughts and then have other people uh, comment on those. Uh, the other piece that we really like about this is there may be differences. There may be one side that says before they even look at a single piece of data, don't merge. There may be another side before they even look at another piece of data that says merge um, and they'll rate things differently. But what you'll find in this and what you'll find when we share this online is those areas still have some commonalities and they still have some likes and differences to really discuss. Um, and, and you'll see that in some of the thoughts that came out and wound up on top. Um, 83 of the people, about 62% were from Fort Edward, 38%, 50 people were first from South Lynn's Falls. Um, I thought this was an interesting one, uh, children attending school in your home district. Um, this was split. Um, so I was really glad about this because I think a lot of times um, people think we're only talking about our parents as community members. And we know we have a lot of people in both communities uh, that either had children go through or haven't had yet children go through um, and are thinking about the future. And so we're really glad uh, that we had that diversity in that. Uh, here were the first uh, key thoughts. Um, both uh, board meetings that include both districts would be useful. Uh, questions can be more effectively answered. Um, I think that uh, while we had the meetings of the joint boards uh, with um, the consultants, um, it's an interesting piece because it was the number one rated thing by 34 people uh, for sure. Um, usually when boards run, they're thinking about their current taxpayers. And so that's why um, each board is charged with making sure they have information for those, but having that information be as same as possible. So we do have our board presidents on tonight. I can almost guarantee all of our board members uh, from each uh, com community are on, are on the YouTube stream. Uh, they are a part of this. Um, the next one was what expanded opportunities would be provided to children of Fort Edward. Everyone cares how this impacts the children short and long term. And, and um, I'm appreciative that they talk about the provide for Fort Edward. But as we said, it's really about all the students and what opportunities we would use with this money, kindergarten through 12th grade in all four towns. Um, and then the, obviously the one was a long term plan. Hopefully, uh, whoever um, had had starred that sees that that has been part of our conversation, uh, both with the consultants and on our own. So when you really think about all of the thoughts um, and the total number of thoughts that were in each, uh, taxes and costs were the very, was one that got the most kind of themed thoughts. Uh, curriculum and support was another one. Uh, staffing, buses, and then voting. So those are the five themes. And each one of those, you can share what the highest ones are. You'll see there's some that are similar. You know, the top thought of taxes and costs, what will happen 10, 15, and 20 years? Uh, from that. 
how the school plans to make a budget and continue whether merge happens or doesn't happen, looking to the next five years of sustainability. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you want to talk about that one and what Fort Edward does. You know, I, I, I mentioned already that in our budget presentations, we do those, those five-year plans. Yeah. We, we did a five-year plan presentation at the last board meeting. And as a matter of fact, the uh, slideshow is on the Fort Edward website. And it uses the same type of assumptions, the growth in state aid for our operating aid, as well as using a 2% growth each year in taxes. And it talks about what, you know, with a carry forward budget, with just what we have today, where we are and where we will be in five years, as far as maybe deficits or needs. And it also talked about restoration of some of the things that we lost, such as transportation, when the school district had to go to a contingency budget. Perfect. And I think that also talks about the third top thought here, because it talks about that financial stability, and that's part of our five-year plan. Uh, curriculum and support, that these are the top three thoughts there, and it talks about expanded opportunities, which we already saw. Uh, comparisons of the di diversity of educational opportunities in Fort Edward and South Plains Falls districts to gain information on comparative quality of education opportunities often to help evaluate as best for the students. And, and um, you know, when we talk about that diversity, it's really that joining of one. And so uh, Mr. Dawkins talks about the course catalog and kind of merging the two, um, and then looking to see what other gaps we have into that. Uh, so that was discussed uh, during this part. And then obviously the long-term educational and financial benefits was the top one here. Um, and again, I, I think that goes into that programming question, but also the long-range planning. So do you want to entertain some questions now or sure. do you want to keep going and wait? No, if it's um, about those two topics, we are happy to well, do that. Well, a little bit. I think some of these things are about um, instruction and, and buildings and things like that. So I think, you know, it kind of fits in here. Um, one of the questions was how many students could be absorbed per grade before the need for current Fort Edward teachers would be necessary? So it sounds like that's asking within, within the current four elementary schools already so, um, so I can, I guess I'll answer that. Um, we have class averages in our um, contract. Actually at the last negotiation, we lowered those class averages. Um, we agreed to that as a district. And we have, we have those and those are our maximums. And right now we fall under our maximums in almost every section in the district. Um, maximums are not ideal. And um, while the study talks about the maximums, that's what they're supposed to do because that's part of the state level proposal. Uh, we really don't talk about the maximum. So um, I, I don't know, um, I, I don't know uh, that absorption will be there. Um, Mr. Uh, Besson and I have looked at the numbers uh, per elementary um, classroom and there's over 30 students, I believe, um, in every grade level, kindergarten through fifth grade right now. Uh, which is two classes, um, and that stays two classes. It's there for two classes. So the need to condense uh, because of the support that we're getting through the funding would not be there. Um, so yes, the study talks about moving students and things like that, but I don't think that's a wise move for the students um, and for the new district uh, to do that. It would only happen as if we saw a direct drop um, and that's happened in certain of our, our neighborhood schools in the area. Uh, we have a direct drop where all of a sudden, instead of 30 or 40 students in one building, we have 12. And we don't want to run a section of 12 at the cost of something else. Uh, I don't know if I answered the question with that, uh, Tim, but you know, I, I guess in my head, that's, that's not really part of, of our plan is the assurance says the Fort Edward Elementary School is staying open. Currently, there are two sections there, I believe, kindergarten through fifth grade. That, that's a healthy elementary school, so I hope to have two sections per, um, per grade level. And so that continues to be the plan, no matter what. So the, the, another question, and I think, again, it's just about kind of driving home what those assurances mean. It says, well, the question is, will Fort Edward be reevaluated each year? And what I interpret that to mean is, will the use, will, will the creation of a Fort Edward elementary school be reevaluated each year? How does that fit into the, that five-year assurance? So with the number of students that are in the kindergarten through fifth grade right now, unless there is a distinct drop at every grade level, that building has to stay open 
because the other four elementary schools in the merged district do not have the space to take in all of those students. Um, that is just not possible. We don't have extra rooms for that. We don't have extra places for that to happen. And so that's why this was an easy assurance to let people know that that building was staying open. It talks about five years simply because those are the five-year plans. That's what the state says. You need a five-year plan. That's why the assurances are there. Uh, but every year is a new five-year plan. So you're always five years out in your planning. So it's not like at the end of five years, we reevaluate. We always look at enrollment trends, any good school district does, and there's always a five-year plan. So it's not where something all of a sudden, there's an end date. It just kind of rolls from there. Um, so I, I just don't envision, there's no, there's, no, there's no future saying there's but a significant drop in enrollment in either area to necessitate the thought of, being able to absorb everyone. And then the, and two questions that we have, um, we can take a pause and these can maybe be answered later. One is about the use of um, the high school attached to the elementary building. And the other one is about bus runs for extracurricular activities. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get to bus activities. runs and then right. few, we'll save that other one because I want to make sure we get to staffing. Yep. So that's all too. for now. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so in staffing, you know, obviously staffing is a big piece. Um, to say that, um, there is not a personal side to any of these conversations would be wearing blinders for all of us. Uh, there absolutely is a personal side. Uh, there are staff members that put their heart and soul as educators in every school district and every school. Um, and it's not about the title. Um, the bus drivers, they put their heart and soul into it. The aides, the, the lunch people, all of those people that do that. Um, so when we think about this, there's really a thought of if A, then B. Um, again, as Mrs. Covey talked about, it's really individual. Um, it's really looking at where each person is um, in the scope of things. Um, and it's also about you know, where uh, those uh, components are. Um, and as, there's actually a very specific question that I'm gonna answer in just a few slides on staffing. So um, I will make sure to show that as well. I probably should have added it in this slice. Um, obviously buses, transportation was part of the recommendations and it is a concern um, of that. Um, travel times, extracurricular, um, things like that. Uh, transportation in a merged district becomes equal for all of the students. So if the policy says we bus within a half a mile, uh, after a half a mile to an elementary school, all students would be bused if they're farther than a half a mile to all five elementary schools. If it says we bus after a mile in sixth through 12th grade, all sixth through 12th grade students get bused there. Our policy does say certain times. Again, I can't sit here and say uh, that we don't have bus runs that are long. If you look at the size of the district right now, as far as the area and the scope, um, I used to live on the farthest end. My house, my, my first house when I moved here was almost on the line of Saratoga and South Lens Falls. Just driving here in my car at times was a significant number of miles because of the scope of that. Um, but our bus runs are done in areas. Um, and we decide on how many bus runs we have to, to, to take that. Um, so I know that there's lots of conversation out there about length of bus runs. Um, I've already been doing studies on that last year uh, through COVID. It was really hard to have this conversation, even with the consultants, because all of our bus runs look different, especially in sixth through 12th grade. So the start of this year is just happening. And these numbers are based on the start of this year. Um, these numbers decrease. And I can show that to people as the year goes on, but I wanted to be as honest as possible in the conversation here. Oops, um, I'm gonna skip back to voting in just a second because I put this in the wrong spot. Um, as of today, um, three things are, I'm showing you three things. I'm showing you the length of time, the shortest bus run is currently to every school. I'm also showing you the average time and in every building, except for Harrison, because of the mileage around it, uh, there is at least one to two bus runs uh, that we're still working on to reduce that. Um, our board charges us every year in trying to reduce the runs to less than 60 minutes. Um, again, because uh, we are in the town of Northumberland and the town of Gansvert at times, and, and we have those areas, 
um, or not town of Gansver, town of Moreau, which is Gansver. Um, we have those areas that are outliers. We try to make sure we're condensing those. It's not pretty, it's not perfect, but we do that and we tweak that every year. The biggest number here is definitely the average. Um, if, as you can see, our average elementary runs are definitely less than 30 minutes. That's purposeful. And that's the whole run to try to do that. The middle school gets a little higher as the average. And then the high school is 35 minutes. And that's taking into account our, our quickest runs and our longest runs. And our still our average is 35 minutes. Um, so what would happen um, if the first vote by the board and the second vote by the board would be yes. Again, we would then look at and do studies on all of the new runs that would have to take place in the merged district. And we would have approximate times for that and be able to tweak that along the way. Um, that information would come from all of us in between the first vote and the second vote and would look like this. Okay, it would not necessarily break out every single run, uh, but we would have some approximate times because again, where people move to and how that goes and what programs they are, um, it varies slightly on that. Um, so um, this changes every minute of every day, um, but I wanted to give some data because I do know uh, that there's this assumption that all of our runs are very long and that's definitely not the case, but I also don't wanna sit here and say, we have no runs that are long, uh, because of the geographic area, we have to do that. Uh, voting. Uh, voting is one um, that did not get a lot of comments, but definitely got a lot of stars um, very high uh, for that. Um, so uh, uh, obviously board meetings with both districts is helpful. Um, I think these kind of conversations would continue uh, throughout the process to get to as many community members as possible, uh, whether they're virtual or in person, you would see members of each board of education uh, talking with myself and the interim superintendent and anyone else um, about that. Uh, the other questions, will the district families in both districts have input or voting rights and whether or not the merger take place states the value of the communities involved. Um, there are six votes that need to take place. For those of you who've heard me before, you're probably um, sick of hearing me on YouTube, so I apologize, um, but there are six votes that need to take place. The first two votes would be October 6th by the Board of Education. The boards are not voting on the merger. The boards are voting on whether or not to send the merger to the taxpayers. They are also taxpayers and their vote is equal as to whether or not they agree or disagree with the merger. And they do that when the community votes. So all they do as a board is say, yes, we take it to the community or no, we do not take it to community. We're not comfortable with that right now. After that happens, if one or both boards say no, the conversation is over and the merger study is no more. And so then the answer to this is no, the voters do not get a say in this process if that either of those say no. If they both say yes, then the answer to this question is they do get a say. They actually each community gets a say twice. The first, the next two votes are also on the exact same day. And I have a slide later on that I'm gonna show what, that, what the actual, uh, what the vote is, but it's basically a yes or no of do you agree with the merger or not? And the community votes on that. The majority has to rule. If one of the communities votes no to this straw poll, it's a non-binding vote. The merger is, conversation is done and um, it is put aside. If both communities vote yes, then the work has to take place that we've talked about from November until the next vote. Um, and that work is staffing, busing, special ed services, all those things. No district waits around for the final to vote to do that because that's just not responsible for our students to do that. So all that information would come out to both communities. So that way everyone was very clear on what all those things look like. Then they would vote again based on all that new information, based on all the things that they've already learned from the study. At that time, if both communities who do then get another say in this, say yes, the merger happens. If either of them by majority say no, again, it doesn't happen. And then the budgets of each individual district carry forward for the vote in May. 
Um, so I think that this is really important of, is there any input? There is once the board decides if there should be input or not. Um, and the last one um, that also relies to that, a board members elected represent all stakeholders, not just one group who yells the loudest. And, and so people definitely um, starred this. And I think that's why we did the anonymous thought exchange. We will continue to keep that open because any person in any community can do that and it can be done anonymously. Uh, so it's not about um, anyone who's speaking out loud or who is afraid to, it's about opinions of all and how they're rated. So we'll make sure to keep that open and put that on our shared site. Uh, there was one other question that came up along the way that has never been asked. Um, so I thought I would, I thought um, to make sure to put this on there, um, it got about 3.7, 3.8 out of five stars. Um, and it said, um, comparison of graduation rates and post-secondary education uh, to compare how prepared students are for future work and or education. Um, and so, uh, uh, the, CI the CIOs of both districts um, put together this information to share. Um, uh, always remember that in 2020 and 21, our students are in a pandemic. Um, and so um, whether those are higher or lower, um, there's always that asterisk feeling to that um, because you know, uh, we, if we're not choosing kind right now for our students and if we're not really thinking about what is essential and necessary for curriculum versus all the rules, we're not helping them. It's a pandemic. Um, but, you know, I think that there is a trend there uh, for graduation rates. Uh, this one, I think, touches upon, uh, uh, Tim had asked a question that came up tonight um, about for teachers who are already retired from Fort Edward, will there be any changes to the benefits they are receiving? There seems to be confusion around the issue since current teachers will join the South Glens Falls teacher contract. Um, this is definitely one of those questions where um, lawyers get involved, the rules of the state get involved, uh, but this is actually an easy one for me to answer. Um, previous retirees are guaranteed benefits. Um, they're part of the retirement system. They're part of a contract that they, um, they end on. All of those contracts are binding. We know how many retirees are on which um, insurance, we know what the costs are that a retiree pays versus what the district pays. We know all of those things by every single retiree. Those are part of the debt costs and the incurred costs that the new singular district takes on as part of the study. And so if you retired last year from Fort Edward or 30 years ago from Fort Edward, whatever your retirement benefits are will stay the same as long as, as as long as you're retired from now the merge district. Um, you're still retired from Fort Edward and we do that. Uh, there is one caveat I did write on here and that's because this is true no matter for two separate districts or one difference. The only place is in health insurance. Um, if health insurance is no longer part of the consortium, both Fort Edward and Southlands Falls are part of the same health insurance consortium. Uh, we all have the same health insurance um, plans um, it's just that how we, you know, divvy up the benefits of those plans change slightly. Um, if though, if all of a sudden the consortium no longer supports a plan and some of the retirees are on that plan, they now go to a like plan. Uh, this happened recently in both districts when the matrix plan was no longer. Uh, we had to really talk with all of our retirees about that. So that's a normal practice that happens for retirees. Again, we're part of the same consortium. So therefore that is all there. So um, it doesn't matter if you're a retired teacher, a retired administrator, a retired support staff worker, whatever your retirement benefits are right now, remain the same in a merged district. Uh, Tim, were there any other questions related to that in the, in the question piece before I move on that? Because I know that was, was definitely one in the thought exchange that people had questions on. No, the only question left that actually has to do with um, stuff, things that have been covered in this presentation uh, is a question about the actual physical building in Fort Edward. So I don't know if you want me to ha have that one now. Or I'm really sorry, can you say that again? The only question that uh, is remaining in our sheet that has to do with the things that have actually been covered in this presentation are um, is a question about the physical building in Fort Edward. Oh, okay, so we'll get to that. So I'll versus the elementary school. Okay, so you're yep, gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on that. Yeah, we'll still hold on that. 
Okay. Um, because I want to make sure, because I know that in the thought exchange, there were lots of thoughts on staffing. Um, and this one was kind of the summary of it. How many staff, not just teachers, will lose their jobs? And and this was definitely something that didn't feel right in the in the study itself. And, and as a person that watched the study and was not a participant, I didn't really love this part. But the state decides on what the study gets looked at. Um, and that's what we have to do for that. Um, and it really makes sense once I think it through, uh, but, but it's hard. Um, it's hard to think about this. Um, um, in staffing, um, in a merged district, uh, there is only one superintendent. Um, I'm the superintendent of South Glens Falls. I will be the superintendent of South Glens Falls, whether we're an individual district or we are, whether we are a merged district. Uh, that was the case. Um, whether, whether it was um, an interim superintendent there or whether it was a new superintendent there um, when it was um, Dan before that. And annexation keeps the same superintendent. So, you know, that component is there. Um, I did not put the Board of Education down in staffing because uh, the Board of Education are elected officials, not necessarily staff members. Um, in our assurances, the Board of Education merges into one Board of Education and our assurance has representation from the town of Fort Edward and from everywhere else, whether it's voting or non-voting. Uh, so I know there's always questions about uh, why would a board and a superintendent um, talk themselves out of a job, as an example. Um, I'm not, um, I'm just giving you the, the facts, um, whether or not you choose to vote yes or vote no is up to each individual taxpayer based on their beliefs. Um, but we have to be here to show um, all the cases for that in this nature. Um, so really out of the board and the two superintendents on this per this piece, um, I'm the one that has the job and I will be here for a number of years in South Glens Falls. Uh, Mark is an interim right now and, and that you know would change if Fort Edward were to stay one district, then you would be looking for a superintendent. Administrators, uh, we don't talk about administrators in the study because usually we really need most of the administrators. Um, you know, uh, right now Fort Edward has an interim principal uh, but again, in the insurances, the elementary building stays open. So therefore you need an elementary principal. Um, so that doesn't change the number of administrators that we have um, for that. Um, right now, if the only time it would change is if we had two full-time business managers or two full-time of any of those um, central office uh, people. Um, Mark, I'm not sure uh, which of those positions are full-time right now for you. None. We're all interims or retirees working part time. So I, I think that's a piece as we would still, you know, use those positions and, you know, add or subtract to them, you know, based on, you know, um, who is um, a long term person there. Uh, the study does talk about teachers. It absolutely yeah, does. Do. The state re requires us to. Um, it talks about teachers um, in the assurances that both boards set up to the committee, but also to the superintendents was we keep staff It is important. Um, is important for their livelihoods to keep staff. And so, you know, staff always ebbs and flows. Um, we, did, we did a lot of talking about um, through attrition and retirees. Um, actually, Mark and I have looked at uh, anticipated retirees um, and where those pieces are um, for teachers. Um, so that way, um, the goal is to keep all teachers. That's the goal. Um, on September 22nd at 7.39 p.m., we haven't done the study to fruition, but if there were votes of yes, we would do that and share that with people to try to be as transparent as possible. Um, in, um, in deciding on you know, who stays and who doesn't stay, um, the rules are set up by the state. Uh, when two merged districts come together through annexation, um, everyone in South Glens Falls uh, keeps their positions and keeps their seniority as far as that goes and Fort Edward comes in and does that. There's a difference between seniority and step and years of experience and all of that. And that would be going over with each individual person. But the most senior teachers in Fort Edward are hired by the merged district first, no matter what. That's part of the state rules. It's part of the reduction in force lists. Um, that's why uh, the least senior seniority people wind up in the reduction for force lifts. Those rules stay the same in a merged district. Um, so um, you look at your most senior people, you look at where they are, 
you look at what the options are for them, you make decisions on where you want them to go, where they want to go, and then you fill in after that. Um, and you do that in a way that meets uh, the contracts, meets the feeling you know, of the comfort level of those teachers and so on for that. So um, the most senior teachers are given the positions and it works its way down from there. If we had to make a reduction in force list, it's the ones that are the least senior with the least experience in Fort Edward. Uh, support staff. This is the one that felt squishy to me um, because uh, I wanted to do more of a study on the support staff. Uh, but you know, when you think about it, um, support staff is necessary. Uh, you have a building, you need a building secretary. If the building, when the building stays open, then the building secretary needs to be there. Uh, you have custodians to keep the building clean. The building is staying open, so the custodians need to, to stay there. You serve breakfast and lunch in all schools, so your lunch uh, people need to stay there. Uh, you need aides hired for special education, for one-on-one, -on -one, for group aides, for program aides. They need to stay there. Uh, you need uh, drivers. Uh, actually, we all need drivers. We need more drivers than we've ever need. This might be my plug. Do you have your CDL license? Give us a call. Um, everyone needs a driver. Um, so we know that absolutely, if you're a driver in uh, both districts, there's not a piece. And so really, when you think about why the state doesn't ask for any specificities on this, it's really because support staff is necessary in a district, regardless of the size and whether it merges or not. And so there is really that feeling that those losses will not happen because they're necessary uh, based on the programs and the, way, and the way that the building is run for that. Um, so, uh, oh, I, I missed a slide. Oh, no, maybe not. Um, so then I talk about, then it's just the next steps. And again, I, I, I don't need to beat this to death because I did talk about the six things there. Um, I think that uh, the building itself of Fort Edward, it's currently a K-12 building. And obviously we talk about it in terms of an elementary school. So the question is always, yeah, so what about the rest of it? Um, what happens um, in any merged district um, is building condition surveys are done of every building. We're actually, as we actually have just completed our visual walkthroughs of all of our buildings. I know that was done recently in Fort Edward and all of that is reviewed and looked at. Um, and then because the space is for all of the district, we would look at how we use that space and what makes the best use of it. Um, I know there's questions about, do you sell off a portion of the building? No, we own, we would own the building. So there's now selling off portions of the building. Uh, yes, right now in Fort Edward and in South Glens Falls, both districts house what's called a BEARS program, which is a, a program that supports our special education students through BOCES. Uh, we do that because we want all students to have an education uh, for that. And so those pieces may still be there um, and that may still be happening um, along the way. Um, for those conditions, but it's not to say that all of a sudden that changes. Um, space is always an issue, um, whether it's storage, whether it's uh, curriculum writing, whether it's meetings, whether it's a uh, flexible space, whether it's the, the arts programs, whether it's uh, sports and athletics programs. Um, so any extra space is looked at in the eyes of what would be good for students and then conversations would be had along the way about what to do with that space. Um, but to say we were doing that now puts a cart before the horse. Uh, we need to first make sure that there's conversations around, you know, is this going to happen? What would that look and feel like? And then we would start taking steps along the way to talk about any open spaces and what the needs are for there on that. So uh, one last click, um, if you jo joined us late, and you're wondering where we're getting the questions from, again, if you hold your camera up to the screen um, and you, the camera will open up this QR code, it will send you to a Google form um, and it will allow you to ask questions along the way. Um, I am gonna stop sharing my screen soon um, and make sure that we answer any questions. Uh, Mark, um, I did um, the talking at the end because I was more comfortable with the thought exchange. I know that, uh, but I didn't know if you thought I missed anything or have anything else based on some of the questions that have been brought to you uh, that I didn't touch upon. 
No, one of the things that I know we're, we're working hard here, John and I, is um, finding teachers. And they're a valuable commodity. You don't just let them go. And I think Christine basically shared that. She's going to look a way to follow those people into her family to make sure she has them. I mean, they're great people and you don't want to lose them and you don't want to be out searching for them a year later. So you saw the funding, you saw how it's broken up into three things, three, three pots of money. There's long range planning. Long range planning is the key. And, you know, looking at things where she's planning for 15, 20, 30 years out, those are the kinds of things. Our five-year plan that we presented last week is, is a key bit of information people need to look at. Five-year planning is the key to any school district. So, you know, please get involved. Please ask those questions. We want to share that information. Um, and I look forward to having more opportunities where we could share information with you so you can make a um, informed decision. Thanks. Tim, did any or floor did any new questions come in? Uh so um, we do have the question about um, what happens to Fort Edward High School? The buildings are connected, but one side hosts the whole elementary. Will it be rented out for other uses or remain a vacant three-story building? It's important to know it will be in the same building as elementary students. I'm trying to find that one because you talked a little fast for me at eight o'clock oh, at I'm night. Sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want me to, do you want me to go again? Yes. What happens, what happens to the Fort Edward High School? The buildings are connected, but one side hosts the whole elementary. Will it be rented out for other uses or remain a vacant three-story building? It's important to know what will be in the same building as elementary students. Yeah, so I, I think that was um, kind of what I just summarized as far as doing a visual walkthrough and a building condition survey. Um, just because the elementary are housed where they are right now, um, one of the pieces is with extra room, are there more possibilities for elementary students? And so I think we have to just look at the whole, um, if it were to come to fruition there, uh, then each individual piece. Um, but there would be information following on that um, and in that piece for all taxpayers, um, if we were ever to change what the use of that other side of the building would be. Okay, a couple more coming in. Um... In regard to taxes, is there a chance Fort Edward values are reassessed and continue at a levy of 21%? Uh, the, Mark, do you want to take that question? Sure. When you get reassessed, it, the assessment just hopefully equalizes the other homes within the community as compared to the other homes. When we get reassessed, probably the values are going to go up, but the so-called tax rate may come down, but that doesn't change the levy that the district needs to operate. So when the state did that so-called 100% equalization rate, the bottom line is that's not the rate our taxpayers pay. That's the rate that the state says our taxpayers would be paying if they were all in the same district at 100%. That's equalizing us across the state level regardless of districts. So that $21 would probably stay the same, although our local tax rate might change. Uh, we have a question here of, about staffing. For teacher's assistant and um, aid positions, is it possible for Fort Edward to gain staff in that area because there is a lack there at this time? Will that be looked at? A uh, quick answer is yes. Uh, because we'll want the programs to be the same. So in order for like our special ed programs to be similar, uh, if we may need to add staff in order for that to happen. Um, I did see another question here about scholarships for high school mm -hmm. students. Um, um, I did ask that question um, of a merged district. And uh, one of the areas uh, that was done was, uh, first of all, all students, 9th through 12th grade, would then be eligible for all scholarships, uh, regardless if they were from Fort Edward um, you know, the town of Fort Edward, the town of Northumberland, the town of Moreau, the town of Wilton. Um, however, there are times uh, where certain scholarships are related to um, just a certain elementary school or just a certain town. And so like, for instance, uh, Harrison Ave, HSA gives 
um, scholarships to students that were just from the elementary school. Uh, so the private scholarships that would be offered uh, for those, uh, we would look at each one and uh, the rules of that scholarship would be adhered to in the um, merged school district. I don't know if there were any others. Nope. nope. Okay. Uh, so with that said, since there are no other questions, um, the thought exchange, uh, I appreciate anyone who hopped on for a short amount of time or a long, large amount of time. Um, you know, we, we take these conversations very seriously uh, because uh, there's always, um, there's, there's a student side, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a financial side, there's the emotional side of all of this and what's best. Um, in speaking, um, you know, I, I can speak for my Board of Education um, in saying that, um, you know, their bottom line is, does this fit for both communities? Do the community members feel that it fits for both communities? And does it support our students? Um, and that's really what we want the community to know. Um, we will support whatever decision is made uh, by the communities. and. Um, uh, for me, um, I will support whatever decision is made uh, by both uh, by both board board uh, programs on October sixth. Um, so we will have that information um, to both communities on what that vote was very quickly after it happens. Um, if both boards say yes, then we will also very quickly have um, what the voting procedures will be. Uh, for November. Um, there were questions I forgot to mention on absentee ballots. Um, absentee ballots would be run, um, I believe, exactly the same as the May, uh, as the May votes. Um, so people would get mailed the absentee ballots if you're on the list. And if you need to apply for one, all of that would stay the same. So, you know, we would have work to do uh, quickly uh, for the November vote uh, for that. So with that, uh, that I don't think anything else came in. So that concludes this evening. Um, thank you, Flora and Tim on my side. Thank you, Bill, Bill, Bill for being here. Uh, Mark, uh, any last comments? No, just um, I was glad to be a part of this, um, share the information. And I look forward to, as we move further, more opportunities to give people the information that they request. I like this thought exchange because it really brings good questions to the top. Great. Uh, have a nice evening, everyone. Happy first day of fall. Um, I think we're going to start feeling that fall weather uh, this week and the leaves will be changing and we'll be able to do all that. Um, I know I've seen a few hot air balloons in the air when you live in this region, uh, seeing those fall festivals and the hot air balloon is an exciting time. So I hope people get to do enjoy those things, um, even though we're still in those hard times um, of the pandemic, uh, we have to look for those bright sides along the way uh, for all of us and especially for our students. So uh, take care and have a great night. At this time, we are stopping the recording and we will be stopping the live stream as well. We just got a little bit of a lag here, Christine. No problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, any last